Hello, how's everybody doing today? Uh, this video, I'd like to cover several things. Uh, the first thing I want to cover is a little shortcut and uh, masking the sky, a little thing I discovered that seems to work pretty well and it's really easy to do. The second, I want to just cover our basic color tools and how we can use those to enhance specific colors and ranges of colors. And then we're going to talk about some masking and we're doing that by actually working on a photograph and showing some of these techniques that we used in the sky masking and color uh, enhancements and, and just regular processing photos in Lightroom. So to start out, I'm going to start out with the first one, which is the masking of the sky. And this is something I kind of found out by accident, uh, trying to make my sky mask a little more precise. To start out with, we're going to go to our mask and we're going to create our sky mask and you can see it in magenta but you can also see around these areas you see a little less magenta which means that it's not 100 percent mask and we can see that even better by going here to the little three dots and choose white on black and it shows our mask in a white and black kind of color so what we want to do is refine it so we get better definition in these edges and not so much gray area within the tree. We'd like to have it all white like this. So to do that, we're going to go up to our mask, our sky mask, and uh, we're going to invert the mask. All right. Now our foreground is masked and the sky is not selected. So remember, white reveals, black conceals. So white is what we're masking right now, but we want to clean it up so we have better definition in these trees. To do that, we're going to go up under mask. I'm sorry, we're going to go to subtract. And we're going to select sky. And when we do that, see it took away some of the sky. And now our tree limbs look better defined. Let's do that one more time. We're going to go to subtract sky. See that? Now we have hardly any white within this tree and we have good definition of our tree line. But we need that in the sky. So the next thing we're going to do is go up here and invert the mask again. Now we have a good sky mask. And because our mask is done, I'm going to double click here and we're going to call it sky. All right. So I have my sky mask. Now I want a foreground mask. And all I need to do there is come here Duplicate and invert. I'm going to call this foreground. So in just a few clicks, and I'm going to turn it back to a regular cover overlay. In a few clicks, we have made a good mask for our foreground. You can see right here. And we have a good mask for our sky. And it's very clean. So uh, let's darken this up just a little bit. And let's uh, grab our foreground right here. And we can lighten this up a little bit. Maybe add a little contrast. And there, just with a two simple masks we made real quick, we've made a, a big time adjustment in, in our photograph here. The uh, next thing I want to talk about is our use of color tools that we have. And if we look at the basic tools that we use every day, the first one is in our basic panel, and it's our vibrance and our saturation. These tools basically do the same thing. They intensify all colors across the whole picture. They, they don't specify. They affect everything all at once when we move the slider. There is a little difference in what they affect between saturation and vibrance. Saturation is like the hammer. It affects everything when you slide it while the vibrance primarily affects colors in the mid-tone range. It also protects skin tone, skin tone colors. So if you have a portrait, your vibrance is going to be your best tool to enhance your color. So think of a vibrance as a fine tuner of saturation. I would probably just use my vibrance most of the time. If I can't get the color changes I want, I might then bring out the saturation slider and try to increase it a little bit. But your friend is going to be the vibrant slider. It leaves those colors that are very intense. It leaves those alone and affects the milder colors and the mid-tones uh, instead of affecting everything equally as the saturation slider does. So that's our vibrance and saturation. The next one is our HSL sliders right here, HSL, and it stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. For the most part, 
probably just use saturation and luminance. Saturation being intensifying the color and luminance is brightening up the color. The thing about this tool is that when you choose a color, say blue, it will only affect the colors in the blue range. Now remember, colors are made up of red, blue, and green. So there are colors in between like yellow, but they have a certain range of red, blue, green percentage so that when we slide the yellow slider, it's only going to affect colors in that yellow range. When we slide the blue slider, it's only going to affect the colors in the blue range. So you can see if we look elsewhere in the photograph, as I move this around, it's really not affecting those other colors. If we grab red, you don't see hardly any change in the picture because there's really no reds in the photograph. If you ever wonder what the color is <clears throat> that you're looking at or what percentage of it is, if you put your cursor over a certain part of the, the uh, photograph, you will see in your upper left-hand corner where your histogram is, it gives you a percentage of what your color is. So it's 62 red, 61 green, and 38 blue. So that's what the RBG values are for the color that you're hovering over. If we go up to the sky, we'll pick like a light blue, 30, uh, 73 red, 73 green, 78 blue. So even though this color is blue, it's probably evenly distributed between red, blue, and green. So it's like a blue gray, but you've got to have equal amounts of red, green, and blue just about to bring out that color. Now, knowing that, we're going to move to the next tool. And this is my favorite tool to adjust color because it has like special magic qualities to it that enhances numerous colors at the same time. And that's our calibration tool. That's right here. Now the calibration tool works in a different way. Like I said, you know, we have, uh, let me bring up a color wheel here. A colors are made in Lightroom and Photoshop at, with the pixels that contain blue, red, and green values. And a combination of those values make up colors like yellow or aqua or magenta. So when you are hovering over a blue, you can look up in your upper left and see this is 41 red, 14 green, and almost 95% blue. Now, when we are using the calibration color tool, it is affecting every color that has a blue value pixel in it. And since green has a blue value pixel and red has a blue value pixel, even though it's very small, it's only 9%, it still will be affected by the blue slider in the calibration. So just remember, when you're using HSL, you're affecting just the single color, single blue, single green, single red. But when you use the calibration tool, you're affecting any color that contains a blue pixel in it. So if I move the saturation here all the way to the left, you can see we have affected magenta, white, green, red. We've affected all these colors just by moving our saturation slider in blue. It'll intensify the blue, but it's also going to intensify the green. It's going to intensify the red. And the same way with our green primary. If we take the green down, of course, it's going to desaturate the green, but it's also going to desaturate these other colors because they have a green pixel in it to make up that red color or that magenta color. And finally, red, if we crank up the red, of course the red's gonna get brighter. The magenta's gonna get a little, uh, little brighter too, and green and yellow, all of these pick up because we're lighting up the red pixel, which all these colors contain a little piece of a red pixel in there. So what does that all mean uh, in the real world when we're changing our colors with the calibration tool? So let's go back to our picture. And let's take our blue primary slider. So I want to increase the blue in my sky. Uh, I don't want to use it with HSL because I think I might get some benefit out of this slider also in my foreground. So I'm going to grab my blue primary on my calibration tool. And as I crank it up, look what I get. I get a really nice light up of my flowers here. My greens brighten up a little bit. And I get a little brighten up in the sky. Not as much as here because there's more blue pixels over here than there is here, believe it or not. Same way with our green. If I start bringing up my green, it's going to light up the green and the yellow if I take it down. And with red, there's really not a lot of red pixels in here. But there's red in these yellow values 
and it's brightening them up. So it's really kind of hard to give you a good straight answer on which one of these sliders is the best for your, your uh, photograph. So that's why it's just best to grab the slider, start moving around, and see what you get. Because you'd be really surprised, especially in this blue, because I've started using it for my sky, and then I started realizing, hey, it's really making things nice in my foreground. So I just kind of bump it up there. Now, once you get this to a level that you want, you can always, like I want to bring my green uh, value down. I, I don't like it that yellow. I can grab my green hue slider. I could bring that down and it takes some of the yellow out. So between the hue and the saturation, you can get a nice look at it. And if it's just too much green, you can always go back up to your HSL slider, grab your green slider and you can actually bring that down. So you can desaturate it a little more and you won't be affecting the yellows. So between your HSL and your calibration, just playing with the sliders, you can probably find a really nice combination that gives you the color change and the color enhancement that you want in your photograph to make it really pop right off the screen. All right, so let's take some of these uh, tools that we were just talking about, some of those techniques, and see what we can do uh, with this photograph. This is a photograph of some windmills in Zotzischein's Netherlands. It was kind of in the morning, a little haze, still hanging around. So let's see if we can brighten up the sky and uh, knock down this haze a little bit and make this picture look a little nicer. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to go into my basic panel and grab my crop tool and my angle, and I want to level this off. So I'm going to grab just the top of this fence. Pick a level, level it just a little bit there. Next thing I want to do is click Auto to see what I have here. So it's an adjusted a little bit. If we take our exposure slider and move it back and forth, you can still, you can see we still have some good color and definition in the sky. So we, we want to start working on that. So let's grab our sky mask, and you can see that it masked it pretty good. If we turn on white and black, we can see we have a good mask. Uh, but we have some areas that we could probably refine it a little better. So we'll use that technique where we're going to invert the mask, and then we're going to subtract the sky. And you see we did get a little cleaner around the wind vanes of the um, windmills and a little better definition at the uh, horizon. So. We're going to say this is a good sky, so we're going to go and invert mask one back to sky, and we're going to save it as sky. And then we're going to duplicate and invert, and this is going to be our foreground. So let's take a look at the sky. First, we're going to turn the cover overlay back on. We're going to choose our sky and we're just going to darken it up a little bit. So we don't want it too dark because it starts getting uh, a little gray on the horizon. So let's turn up the contrast a little bit, give it uh, little highlights, some shadows, and a little white to brighten it up a little bit. We might add just a little bit of blue to it, but we're going to do a little bit more. Uh, a little later with uh, the color with HSL. So we'll leave it like that. We'll give it a little clarity, uh, which gives us a little separation in the clouds. And then I'm going to bring the texture down because I don't want those sharp edges. So that's a, a good look of the sky. If I wanted to enhance the clouds any, uh, I would go the sky uh, and create a new sky mask. And in this new mask, I don't need it to be uh, refined like I did the first one because all I'm caring about is the clouds. And I'm going to do an intersect with a color range, meaning I want to pick a color to intersect with this whole mask. And when I intersect, it will only affect those areas that the mask and the color I select. So I'm going to select this white area right here. And you can see it's already gotten rid of a lot of the blue. And I'm going to refine it a little bit. And now I'm just going to turn the exposure up just a little bit. So we have a little more, a little more contrast. Um, bring the shadows down just a little bit. And turn the whites up just a little bit, just a little bit. And again, maybe hit a little clarity in those clouds and trim down the edges with the texture. So if we look at our sky, our cloud mask, 
if I turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on. So we got a little more definition in the clouds uh, by, by using that. All right, the next thing we want to do is uh, let's look at our foreground and let's see if we can bring that up any. I'll give it a little more light and a little more contrast. I'll bring the highlights down a little bit, the shadows up a little bit. I don't think the whites need to be changed too much. And we'll bring the blacks down to bring our, our shadows back in because everything is starting to get a little washed out. And remember, we want to we want to bring these uh, windmills back in a little more focused than they were hazy before and maybe just add a little clarity. And, and of course, we're adding to the whole picture here, so we have to be careful we don't get crazy that we uh, add too much to the sky. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to single out these windmills, and we're going to do that with uh, create a mask. We're going to use objects, and I'm just going to outline these windmills like this. I don't really need that building in front of it. And then uh, I want to give it a little more golden color. Uh, we might add a little dehaze and give it a little bit of touch with shadows. All right? And I'll do the same thing with the next windmill. You don't have to be too precise uh, with this. I'm not going to get the building in front because it's pretty fine on its own. I'm just concentrating mainly on the windmill. So you can see it didn't get all of it, so what we can do is click Add with a brush. Make sure we're at 100%. Make my brush a little smaller. And then just paint in that area, just like that. So now let's hit our exposure a little bit. And a contrast, and then hit the dehaze a little bit, and maybe give it a little touch more color from the sun coming in from the left there. And we want to do one more mask, and we're going to do that on this final windmill here. That looks good. Bring the exposure up just a little bit. Shadows. Let's hit the dehaze. Maybe warm it up just a little bit. So there we have a, a pretty good uh, picture of everything. Kind of the haze kind of gone. The sky's looking pretty good. Let's go to our calibration tool. And let's see if we grab the blue to brighten up our sky a little bit. To blew it up. It looks like it's it's bringing the uh, the light to the grass pretty good. And I'm going to kind of tone down that yellow in the grass with the green primary hue. And let's see what the red slider does. Red slider just hits it a little too hard. I'm probably not going to do anything with that. I kind of like the way it looks right now. You can see where the sun is coming in from the left. It's hitting the windmills. It's lighting up the grass. Uh, the next thing I want to do is brighten up that fence just a little tiny bit, not a whole lot. Uh, with that, I'm going to use a linear gradient, and I'm going to drag it across the whole fence like this. And then I'm going to intersect this with color range. I'm going to pick a color of the fence and it will wipe out the mask over everything except for the fence. And as you can see, my magenta looks really good. Nothing's getting on the grass except down here where it's a little darker. I can use my refine and bring it down a little bit more. And then anything that's left over, I can just hit subtract with a brush and I can go right down here and brush away till the magenta is gone. And that gives me a clean mask of just the fence. So now I can go to exposure and crank it up just a little bit on the fence so we can see the texture of the wood. And we might see if a clarity is going to do anything for us. Just a little bit. Maybe give it a little more in the shadows to bring it out.
about like that. So if we look at our before, we have this. If we look at it after, we have this. Nice, pretty picture. Now if we wanted to kind of juice up the blue in the sky a little bit more, we could go to our HLS, uh, HSL slider and take the blue, and we can turn that up a little bit. Let's turn on saturation. That brings in the saturation a little bit. If it starts to look a little unreal, then we could go to the hue and tweak that till we got a blue that we like that looks like the real sky, something like that. Then we can come back to basic. Maybe we could add some whites. Uh, in there, the whole picture, or if you wanted that, just juice up the whites in your sky. We can go to our sky mask and then grab the whites and brighten that up a little bit and like, let the sky look like a little more of a morning morning line. So that's our picture uh, with uh, using our, our masking, our HSL, our color calibration, and then just some, several masking that we put on our windmills to make it look a, a little clearer than the haze of the day. And now we can look at our pictures side by side and see that we start out with just an average looking picture, but using a couple masks and a couple of color enhancing tools where you can bring that picture to make it eye popping and something that we remembered what it looked like when we got there. And, and what I wanted, wanted to stress in this video is that while we have really good tools for masking, you know, whether it's a subject, the sky, background, or people, or objects. We just have to remember that that mask is just a starting point. Once we've defined the type of mask we're going to do use, again, then we need to step in and use our other tools, whether it's to invert it or duplicate it and invert it, or intersect it with a mask, you know, and refine it even more, or use your add and subtract tools. Again, subtract with any one of the the uh, masking tools you have available to you already to help you refine those areas of the picture so that when you apply the mask, you get the effect in only that one certain area that you're trying to affect. And that's what gives the, the picture pop, that we can target each area and bring the color and the luminance out to make the picture look as we remembered it when we were there visiting. If anybody needs any help with any of this, please give me a call or shoot me an email and I'll be glad to help out. I'll talk to you all soon.